الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتدخلوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم استوفوا بالنساء خيرا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Honorable scholars, respected elders, brothers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a very short life Compared to the other nations, if we look Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a very short, a very short span of life It reflects the hadith of Nabi alayhi salam. Nabi alayhi salam said, My ummah will live between the age of 60 and 70. In this very short span of life which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, we should be conscious in two things. One is the hukukullah, the right which we should fulfill to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also hukukul ibad, that is, the right which we should fulfill to our fellow brothers and sisters. Today I wish to speak about the right that we should fulfill to the woman. When it comes to the woman, there are three women there who are dearest, who are closest to us. What does Islam say about them? How do we fulfill their right? The mother, the wife and our daughter. When it comes to the mother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِنسَانَ I emphasize upon you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I emphasize upon you to treat your mother kindly. حَمَلَتْهُ أُمَّهُ قُرْحَا وَوَضَعَتْهُ قُرْحَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, She gave birth to you with difficulty, and she bore you with difficulty. A person comes to Nabi alayhi salam and says, Ya Rasulullah, who has the greatest right upon, uh, upon people, upon a person? Then Nabi alayhi salam replies, Your mother. Again, the person asks, Ya Rasulullah, who has the greatest right upon, the first, upon a person? Nabi alayhi salam replies, Your mother. Three times Nabi alayhi salam says, Your mother. The fourth time Nabi alayhi salam replies, Your father. Another hadith, Nabi alayhi salam, a person comes to Nabi alayhi salam and says, Ya Rasulullah, if I carry my mother and perform the whole of Hajj, I carry my mother and perform the whole of Hajj, will I be able to fulfill the rights of my mother? Nabi alayhi salam said, maybe a, maybe a, a moment which she bore while she, gave, while she was giving birth to you. Maybe a slight moment. Fulfilling the rights of our mother, the Quran, does not mention the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say to the parents to love their children. Because naturally it is in their hearts. They will always love their children. But the Quran always says to the children to love their parents. Because they will, they forget their parents. They forget their mother. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't even use the word uf. When, when they become old, don't even use the word uf in front of them in, in disrespect. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the children to respect the parents, respect the mother, but not the parents to love the children because naturally it is in their heart. This is with regards to the mother. The second aspect is our wife. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ General principles Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I emphasize upon you to treat your wife kindly. The advice of Nabi alayhi salam, what more advice do we need than the advice of Nabi alayhi salam? Nabi alayhi salam says, Istawfu bin nisa'i khayra. I give wasiyah to you, I emphasize upon you to treat your wife kindly. Nabi alayhi salam did not even leave in speaking about the women, the speaking about our wife, even in the sermon of Hajjatul Wada. Hajjatul Wada is that sermon where Nabi alayhi salam uh, mentions the broad principles of Islam. 
the broad principles of sharia even in that sermon nabi alayhi salam said fattakullah fi nisa nabi alayhi salam said i i i give i give you the advice and i emphasize you i emphasize upon you to fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to your wife and your and the women because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has because by taking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name she has come into your nikah before that it was not halal for you to touch her but now by taking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name she has come into your nikah so it is your responsibility it is for you that you have to fear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to fulfilling her right respected brothers tells us when you look at the wife compatibility between the wife and you and a person it is very difficult we understand it because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created her different allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said her thinking will be different if a person says if a person says if a person's intention is that my wife has to be exactly the way i want it will never happen because allah has created her different her thinking is different allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran fa in karistumuhunna fa asa an takrahu shay'an wa yaj'alu Allah fihi khayran kafira if you dislike something in your wife and perhaps it will happen because she is not an angel you will dislike something in your wife but then overlook it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yaj'alu Allah fihi khayran kafira Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept many other good things in her whatever you dislike you overlook that but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept many other good things in her a person comes to nabi alayhi salam and then he says ya rasulullah my wife is like this my wife is like this and he starts complaining about his wife nabi alayhi salam said talliqa give her talaq then he falls for a minute and then he says but ya rasul i still need her then keep her Nabi alayhi salam said because when Nabi alayhi salam said talaq ha give talaq wa then she then he realized that what and what good things is my wife doing to me when she looking after my children she is taking washing my clothes so many good things is uh, she is doing to me then i have to overlook the dislike small small disputes what is happening we have to overlook umar radhiyallahu anhu time a person comes he had a problem with his wife then he he wants to complain to uh, uh, umar radhiyallahu anhu he walks to umar radhiyallahu anhu's house before knocking the door he hears a dispute between umar radhiyallahu anhu and his wife also then he understand he think the very same problem which i am facing umar radhiyallahu anhu also facing let me go back and he turns back umar radhiyallahu anhu sees him umar calls him come here brother what happening why did you come to visit me he says no uh, no for oh, amir mu'minin i came to uh, i came with a complaint but i see the very same complaint which i came with you also in that very same uh, uh, difficulty explain to me what is it then he says that i i have so many problems with my wife she does not uh, uh, listen to me and he complains about his wife then one of the answer is yes it is true even my wife also is it is the very same thing but i don't look at that i look at the good what she has done even she taking care of my children even she taking care of my my house my wealth she washing my clothes so many good things umar radhiyallahu anhu started mentioning he was confined and he was satisfied he says amir mu'minin jazakallah and he goes back so we need to understand and we need to overlook what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said allah ta'ala says in the quran wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwaja from amongst the signs that that one allah is existing that is that allah has created for you from amongst you min anfusikum litaskunu ilayha so that you may gain pleasure you may gain comfort and you may gain happiness from whom litaskunu ilayha Uh, from this wife from your partner and not only that allah taala says wa ja'ala bainakum mawaddatan wa rahma we are the ones who put love between the husband and the wife we are the one who put love and not only love mercy also it is from allah subhanahu wa taala between the spouses mercy it is from allah subhanahu wa taala 
when time passes when the marriage is carrying on for a 10 years 15 years then we see the rahmat that the mercy which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in between the spouse their love increases this is from all the soul from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the greatest example the quran speaks about hazrat ayub alayhi salam hazrat ayub alayhi salam was a, such a, a he had everything he had orchard he had garden he had field he had 14 children in according to one riwayat he had 14 children but what happened in one instant everything his orchard his garden his field his children allah took away every one of them imagine 14 children imagine his all his wealth all his orchard everything allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took it in one moment not only that allah ta'ala gave him such a sickness as that ayub alayhi salam where any no one could go near him no one could even get close to him but who was the prime support of hazrat ayub alayhi salam was his wife rahma indeed she was the mercy to hazrat ayub alayhi salam she was the prime support to hazrat ayub alayhi salam day and night she looked out day and night she was taking care of her husband she never left her. so this is how our wife think about us they have come they have come with that intention that my husband is going to take care of me very well so it is our responsibility that we have to be kind to her other it is coming in the hadith that we, uh, it became so much that once hal tayyib alayhi salam why she comes to hal tayyib alayhi salam and says uh one of you allah now you have you are in so much difficulty and you are in so much pain with this uh, sickness why don't you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take this pain away from you then he asked then he uh, asked his wife and he says uh, to his wife uh, ayyub alayhi salam how many years of prosperity did we enjoy how many years did we enjoy with our orchard with our children she replied 80 years 80 years we enjoyed ourselves with our orchards and with gardens and we had a nice time okay how many years of difficulty are we going through she said 7 years Seven years of difficulty and eighty years of prosperity, I feel shy to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see me. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, He will see me. And He was making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It became so much that once uh, the wife of Hazrat Ayub alayhi salam, she returns back, she sees a young man sitting in the, in the house. She could not recognize, she goes near, she goes to the, that young man and says, there was a sick person who was sleeping here, did you see him? Where is he? Where is the sick person? So he replies, it is me, it is Ayub, it is I am your husband. Allah Ta'ala has cured our sickness. Allah Ta'ala has cured my sickness. So this is how our wives, we should be kind, we should, the right of our wives has to be fulfilled. When Nabi Alayhi Salaam, he got the Nubuwal in the age of 40, the prime support to him was his wife Khadija radiallahu anhu. So we understand from this that how much important to us it is that we have to take care, we have to be kind to our wives. Nabi alayhi salam in one hadith he says, خِيَارُكُمْ خِيَارُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ وَعَنَ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ Nabi alayhi salam says, the best amongst you is he who treats, he who treats his wife generously, who he treats, who he fulfills the rights uh, of the wife correctly. He is the most generous, He is the most best amongst you. Nabi alayhi salam says, خِيَارُكُمْ خِيَارُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ Nabi alayhi salam says, and I am the best from amongst men who treat their wives correctly and treat their wives properly. But then you see in the hadith, Aisha radiallahu anha says, for two moons the, the, the stove of my house did not burn. But still Nabi alayhi salam says, وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ I was the best husband to my wife. So it is very easy for us to create an image in the masjid, we can say, uh, uh, we can create a good image in the masjid, people will start talking good about us. It is very easy. Or in our business places, or wherever we work, it is very easy to create a good image. People will respect your people. But, Nabi alayhi salam says, خِيَارُكُمْ خِيَارُكُمْ The best among you is he who is great. You can be the best among in the masjid or in, the, in your working place, wherever. People are respecting you. But if Nabi alayhi salam give preference to that person who treats his wife properly, who is generous to his wife, he is the best among them. So let us take this all into consideration and also the third aspect 
with our daughters. It has become difficult to bring up daughters more than bringing up the sons. We need to speak to them. Today the western world has made it so much that it is into their minds that if we do not change according to the world, according to how the dunya is moving, then there is no dignity towards us. But that is wrong. The dignity for our daughters, for our women is what Islam has taught. What Allah says in the Quran. What our Nabi alayhi salam has taught. So we need to speak to them and we need to we need to advise them in a such a way that they, are, they will turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nabi alayhi salam has said, a person comes, a woman comes with two daughters to, uh, to Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha house. They are hungry. They ask something from uh, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anha. She, she doesn't have anything. She doesn't have anything. She gives one date to this woman. What this woman does, she breaks the date into two and then one part she gives to the one portion she gives to the one one daughter, the other portion she gives to the other daughter and she remains hungry. Aisha radiallahu anhu sees this and when Nabi alayhi salam returns, he asks Nabi alayhi salam, uh, she tells Nabi alayhi salam that Ya Rasulullah, I saw this is what happened. A woman came and this is what happened. I was hungry but still I gave that particular date. She was also hungry but then she uh, 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 gave two portions, gave one portion to the daughter, first daughter and the other portion to the other daughter and she remained hungry. Nabi alayhi salam said, for that father who with difficulty, with so much difficulty he brings up his daughter correctly, he gives them the proper tarbiyat, he shows them the right path and the proper education has been given, a proper way of deen has been given to her and with so much difficulty he brings her up and then when the correct match comes, the correct person has been, uh, uh, the correct proposal has come, then he gets her married to the correct person, to correct family, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed Jannah for his father. With so much difficulty he brings up his daughter. So it is our, our duty that we have to speak to our daughters, we, we, should, we, we should always be with them, it is not that we leave them like that and then uh, uh, let, them, uh, 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 let them go on their way, no it is not like that, as fathers it is our responsibility to speak to them and ask them what is their responsibility and we have to fulfill it, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look at this at the end, we can see a final wording that is our Jannah lies under the feet of our mother and also our condemn and how we act and how we uh, uh, perform in front of our wives according to that there is a respect towards us and also Jannah is guaranteed if we treat our daughters correctly and give them the proper tabliyat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to practice upon all this.